Okay, class. So we are continuing this lecture on late life depression. This is a slide that I had already talked about. I did say that while depression is not more common in elderly, it can be more serious in elderly, and it's highly underdiagnosed, potentially up to 70% underdiagnosed. Because a lot of the symptoms of depression are actually quite common with aging, you know, such as maybe tiredness, less energy, um, being kind of withdrawn, lower appetite, things like that. And so it's often hard to diagnose as well as elders are not often seeking care. There are many chronic diseases associated with late life depression. Remember late life depression occurs after age 65. These are some of them listed here and I have some percentages on the next slides as well. So these are some percentages of diseases and then depression risk. Um, you don't have to know the percentages, but I think it's pretty interesting. Cancer patients, 25%, post-stroke up to 50%, Parkinson's up to 50% as well. Late life depression is physiologically different than depression in other years. That means there are biological changes in the body as well as the brain that are different from the changes that happen when you're younger. So there can be ischemic changes. These might be things such as lesions on the brain or small vessel damage to the brain or disease of the white matter of the brain. And there can be neurotransmitter deficits as well. Oops, something else should come here. Okay, yes. Also could be associated with a pseudo-dementia. A pseudo-dementia might look like confusion or sadness, and it's sometimes difficult to diagnose. It can be when a person has a depression, but also a cognitive impairment, um, such as potentially Alzheimer's disease. And it's very common for dementia later in, or depression later in life to be associated with inflammation. It is hard to diagnose. I kind of mentioned this already. Some of the components of diagnosis include sleep changes, diminished interest, energy decline, concentration issues, appetite, psychomotor agitation, or suicidal thoughts. And again, some of those things, definitely not all of them, but some of those might be kind of normal-ish with aging. And so it's important to have kind of a comprehensive assessment. Do you want to check for nutritional deficiencies? Because those could cause a depression-like symptom. And you want to interview the family. There is a geriatric depression scale, and it's a 15-point questionnaire that ask some questions related to risk for depression. How are we gonna treat this? So there are many medications to treat depression. Um, I don't know that they're good or bad. I think it's more of a gray area, especially with elders who are already taking a lot of medications. Just some of the potential side effects of medications are um, anxiety, confusion, nausea, vomiting, constipation, fatigue, dry mouth, hypotension, falls, blurry vision, cardiovascular events, anorexia, or weight changes. So taking all those potential considerations into account, it may or may not be the best therapy. Social engagement is very important. Nutrition therapy is very important because malnutrition can make depression worse, and often people with depression choose not to eat very much. Pet therapy, this is a very, very super cute video. And then preschool therapy, also a very cute video. I will try to play it right now because like you have to see it, it's just too cute. But they've done so many studies where they've actually been putting in preschools to nursing homes or elder care facilities. And the shared kind of connection between the young preschool children and the adults is priceless and has mutual benefit to both of them. It can go from anything from food prep to singing songs. Um, and so this is the cutest video ever that hopefully we'll play. Okay. 
play um, or not play. Okay, hold on. Need to pause. Okay, here we go. Like to look at with John. Here's Horton Hatch. Here's a who. Here's a walrus one. Here, honey. What's your name? Max. Huh? Max. 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 Oh, Matt. Max. Max. Matt. Max. Oh, Max. No, Max. 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 Bye-bye. Don't you think they grow up pretty fast for me too? What do you think is going to happen to you guys? Do you think you're going to stay three and four and five forever? No. You have to be a grown-up sometime. No. No? I don't know if I can do it. I can't even do it. <laughs> Can I sing? Ave Maria. You know how you you love somebody and they give you something. You know how hard it hits you on your heart. <laughs> Hot ones running out of my eyes. Years ago, by in a hurry. <laughs> yeah, they do, don't they? Thank you. I guess they're having Gwen's funeral tomorrow. It's tomorrow, yeah. I, I told Gwen, I said, Gwen, I want you to know. I'm going to show up at your funeral wearing a clown nose. <laughs> <laughs> she loved her clown nose, yes. you know? Put your hands together for the graduating class of 2013. Bye bye. Come again. Come when you can. Okay, so I was trying to make that fit in the screen a little bit better and it didn't quite fit in the screen well. Um, but it's a perfect example of how just increased socialization can really, really benefit the elderly and improve their quality of life. And watch the pet therapy one on your own, it's super cute. Okay, 
So how about nutrition? They have done a lot of research on omega-3s, um, specifically dohoxa, docasa hexanoic acid and ecasa pentanoic acid. Um, we're not totally sure that there's a specific supplement dose that helps, but if taken in conjunction with antidepressant meds, it is going to have beneficial effects. There's been multiple studies that shown that when taken together with an antidepressant med, um, having omega-3s in the diet helps that antidepressant medication work a lot better. Also, observational studies have shown that people who eat diets that are rich in omega-3 fatty acid have lower rates of depression than people who eat diets that are poor in omega-3 fatty acids and higher in omega-6 fatty acids. Some natural sources, obviously seafood, fatty fish, but also walnuts, flax, and some soy products may have some of these omega-3s. And if you're going to take a supplement, best to take it with vitamin E because vitamin E is an antioxidant that can help prevent some of those fatty acids from being oxidized. Other nutritional considerations, B vitamins. So we have seen that higher intakes of some of the B vitamins are associated with less late life depression. And one of the things we think this is due to is because of the relationships with B vitamins and homocysteine. Remember when we see low v B vitamin intakes, we see higher levels of homocysteine. And homocysteine has been associated with cardiovascular disease, making depression worse. It can cause damage to the vessels. Um, and specifically, it can cause damage to the small vessels leading to the brain. And so then that could contribute to some of these, what's called ischemic ch uh, changes in the brain. And so instead of just diagnosing an older adult with depression, you would first want to do a diet history and potentially even check for some of these B vitamin levels in their blood. Additional things with depression. So um, observational studies and cohort type studies have observed that people with low vitamin D status do have higher rates of depression. Um, however, as far as supplements go, we're not sure that supplements help, but definitely having adequate levels do help. Vitamin D also has receptors in the hypothalamus, which is a part of the brain that's central to neuroendocrine functioning. And when they did a study, they did a study of 1,200 people, 65 or older, um, they saw that vitamin D was 14% lower in people who had depression versus people who did not. Diets rich in tryptophan could also be important because tryptophan is a precursor to the neurotransmitter serotonin. And so some of the sources of tryptophan are pictured right there. Nutritional implications. So loss of appetite is the number one cause of weight loss in the elderly. Um, and this loss of appetite may be related to depression, um, and it may be a direct result of depression. That says appetite, loss of appetite. We're doing this like hashtag style where there's no spaces. Um, many elderly will de deny that they have an appetite if they're depressed, and they'll just say, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry. Um, and this can lead to severe malnutrition. Also, reduced dietary intakes of many of these vitamins that we just discussed are associated with late life depression. So vitamin D, B12, B6, and omega-3s have all been shown in observational studies. When people have lower levels of these vitamins and nutrients, they have higher risk for depression. And so that being said, it's essential that we focus on diets that provide adequate amounts of these. 
conclusion. Depression can develop later in life. They may be more severe in the elderly. They are physiologically different in the elderly. It can cause and lead to nutritional deficiencies as well as nutritional deficiencies can cause it and contribute to it. And so focusing on nutrition, adequate intakes, diet, and specifically some of the vitamins and nutrients we've discussed can help reduce symptoms and reduce occurrence. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, thank you for being patient with that movie. Okay, bye.